Hi, Mark, Michael, Robert. Thanks for coming to this talk. It's a very great pleasure having you. How are you? We're good, great, Max. Thanks for having us. The pleasure is mine. So let's start talking about Lender B. Yeah, very good. Yeah. So Lender B, um, Lender B is the universally sustainable hiring services marketplace. Uh, the big biggest problem we feel facing society at the moment is increasing population and over consumerism. It is estimated that uh, the world's population will continue to grow all the way to 2100 on a fairly uh, linear path and more people essentially will mean more energy. Uh, in 2019, the world emitted about 43 billion tons of CO2. And out of this, energy use in industry emitted 10.5 billion tons. This was greater than all agriculture and all waste combined. So we believe that there is two choices society can make. Reduce and stop making items and products in industry or share more. Uh, we believe people don't have a problem at sharing. Uh, on social media, there's uh, several ways to express opinions and views, uh, but not everyone can share items as easily as they can. So C2C renting isn't easily accessible or practical. C2C renting for sustainability is a new concept. C2C and B2C renting hasn't been fully digitalized. What we are offering is a digital green marketplace. Here, users can search, select, and save. We are proposing three main categories for people to rent, outdoor activities, general hire, agri, and construction. We are offering user verification, insurance as an add-on, user ratings and reviews, digital contracts, payments, or deposits. Uh, we will be partnering with delivery, companies, and we will also offer sustainability incentives, so CO2 safe calculator. If our offering is safe, easy to use, and has a strong purpose, we believe users will return to us. Our answers and values. A universal and green rental marketplace will help reduce consumerism. It will promote a true circular economy, address many of the UN sustainable development goals, and items have the most efficient service life. We also think that this can help communities in developing countries, so this will give access for all a community, and it will also save and make money for our users and people who are willing to upload their items on our platform. The B2B sharing market, this is huge worldwide. It is estimated at 182.4 billion in just five rental categories that we have listed here. The service revenue is also huge, and this is going to increase in future. The C2C renting market hasn't been fully uh, quantified, but we believe it's also in the billions. Our target audience. So we are targeting businesses in the higher industry. So we are also given businesses that mightn't have a great online presence or businesses who don't traditionally rent their items, a platform to rent their items to, to users, uh, tourists and adventurers, millennials, Women, women are actually more um, sustainable consumers, farmers, young professionals. Um, in the current climate, everyone is feeling the squeeze and house prices and space are at a premium. So we've carried out some research since we uh, incorporated our company last year. So these were as simple as carrying out questionnaires and market research and our questionnaires had some excellent results as shown below. We also visited uh, businesses directly in the Irish Midlands. So we use this data to, to make our MVP. We returned with our MVP for pre signups in four local towns and we had great traction here. We had 50 pre launch users and 50 pre launch businesses. So if businesses that already hire 100% have signed up when approached. So you can see here the different types of businesses that have signed up with us. So I will let Michael uh, discuss our monetization strategy. 
Uh, thanks, Rob. Um, so our monetization strategy uh, will be operating off uh, a commission uh, model uh, between five to fifteen percent uh, charged to the renter and the owner uh, of the items that that will be on the platform, uh, similar to the Airbnb model. Um, we'll also be looking into offering a subscription-based service, um, as well as an item boost feature for renters uh, and uh, uh, streams of ad revenue as well. Um, significant opportunity to capture the market share of this large and growing market. Um, there's, there is no one market leader um, and this supports, uh, provides an opportunity to scale at a fast pace. So just to speak to uh, the Lendor B team, um, our CEO and co-founder is Robert. Um, he has an engineer, sorry, a master's in aeronautical engineering, uh, specializing in wind turbines, renewables and programming. Uh, Mark, uh, co-founder and CFO, um, has a master's in economics and finance and years of experience in the corporate banking industry. And uh, I myself, uh, I'm the co-founder and COO. Um, I have a general science degree and over six years of experience uh, in the tech set sector at Shopify. In uh, 2021, we started our kind of entrepreneurship journey. Um, and the general uh, idea generation happened in March. Um, and then we started applying uh, to um, local enterprise office courses, um, as well as uh, undertaking a start your own business course. Um, we then went into a, uh, a phase of market research and validation, um, which led us into uh, joining the, the New Frontiers uh, Stage 1 program. Uh, we concluded that um, and, we're, and we're able to release our uh, minimum viable product uh, on the Android, uh, uh, the Android version of the app. Uh, was released in August. Um, with the information everything we gathered from that, we were able to use it for further validation, which we took into uh, the new frontier stage two. Um, and we were then able to uh, attend the web summit in Lisbon in uh, November of last year um, as an impact uh, startup. Um, the, the, the part of the reason why this was so great as well was because, you know, as an impact startup, it was demonstrating that our company was, um, you know, helping to uh, helping countries um, fulfill uh, their climate goals. Our future plans um, include uh, getting help uh, from uh, home and abroad with the Enterprise Ireland, uh, the Startup Wise Guys uh, program um, and similar accelerator programs. Uh, we're going to complete uh, the Accelerator, accelerator programs that we're in, uh, the New Frontiers program and Startup Wise Guys. Uh, we'll be building uh, the web version of the app um, for a launch in uh, Q2 um, and hopefully, hopefully then uh, an iOS uh, launch of the app in Q3. Um, we're going to be uh, providing uh, innovative offerings um, and increasing the functionality of the app as we go as well. Um, and we're hoping to receive funding and investment in order to scale across Ireland and then into Europe and beyond. Um, we, have a, we have a global conscious as this is a global problem and we see ourselves as a global company. And finally, just to speak to our, our uh, mission statement, creating a, a greener and more cyclical, cyclical world through better choices. And that's everything, so thank you. Thank you, Michael. Actually, thank you to all guys. <clears throat> let me let me ask you. I mean, today we really face a big problem with we have massive pollution coming from everywhere, and we have a massive production. We overproduce everything. This is because we live in a consumer-based society. We like consume. We think that consuming makes us happy. This is what we do. This. So I'm a big fan of what you're doing because sharing is hiring, sharing is where we should go. Avoiding, reducing footprint, reducing all the bad things we are doing around the world. Now, made this introduction, uh, let me ask you, what is the user journey from both sides? Yeah, like we believe uh, over consumerism is going to increase, like as you, as you can see, the, the world's population is expected to increase uh, on a linear curve all the way to 2050 and onwards. So um, it's, it's a massive problem, like, um, and we hope 
we can give people a, co a common sense uh, platform to help solve this uh, huge problem in a small way. Like we're, we're not saying we're going to solve it all ourselves, but um, <clears throat> in terms of uh, the users, obviously there's going to be two sides. It's a marketplace. We will need, uh, you know, a huge marketing budget to get off the ground. So there will be the, the item owner and the renter. So there'll be, you know, we'll need to manage both sides, but we think uh, the functionality and our offering is great because it will give item owners uh, a sense of peace. People will, users will be able to rate and verify each other on both sides. Uh, we will have a strong uh, ID process, verification, um, and then, you know, we'll also be able to offer insurance on uh, item owners' uh, items. And, you know, this will, this is like, we think like it's, <laughs> It's going to be very hard to, to say, like, uh, you know, we don't want to use your platform because we don't feel safe using it. But um, we think we've gone above and beyond of providing a safe space for this to happen. Um, you know, so um, technology has really uh, almost doubled its speed over the last two or three years with COVID. Like, um, Zoom calls have become the normality, like we're here talking to you over Zoom on the internet. So like, it's just the way things are going. Um, Mike will tell you how well Shopify have done over the last few years. And we just think there's a huge market for this. And like, we were, we were also solving some of the UN sustainable development goals. Um, and we just want society to consume just a little, even if people start consuming and sharing a little bit more you know, it will definitely help the problem and we just need to become as efficient as possible as, you know, as a race to, to help solve this problem because, um, you know, it's scary when you, when you look at it, like energy use and in industry and um, the CO2 produced from this is more than all of agriculture and waste combined. And like, I think agriculture is, has become the scapegoat uh, a little bit, um, but like this is far bigger our bigger problem in our opinion like a lot of this will be behavior changing and, and stuff and we're aware of that but ultimately we want to prove to people that like hi you can be a little bit more responsible and a little bit more um, community based in your consumption and not only is that doable it can make you money um and that's you know that that's going to be a huge part of, of fixing the problem you know, you know with over consumerism and the, the climate uh, problems that it's, you know, contributing to is, you know, demonstrating to people that, you know, helping to solve this problem isn't, you know, this big, scary monster that's going to make your life worse. In fact, it could make your life better because you're going to have less, you know, rubbish in your house and you can make money off the stuff you already have. I mean, what's your approach to the business part? So it's B2B, right? B2C, sorry. And it's going to be also uh, C to C, consumer to consumer, or it's only about business uh, renting to consumers. Yeah, it's both. Um, like initially, we've we've gone to both. We've gone to businesses and we've like done surveys with consumers. Like we know there's other platforms out there that are, you know, exclusively pair to pair. Um, but there's a lot of businesses out there, especially in, in Ireland and where we live, that don't have a platform where they can, you know, list list their items and, um, you know, ha have a lot large enough audience uh, to make it worth their while. And there's also, uh, Mark will tell you, there's also traditional businesses that don't actually rent items that are starting to think about it now. Like we've we went to over 50 businesses in the Midlands over a few days and um, just talked to them. And like we got really good feedback from them, and uh, you know everyone seems very open to this idea. And um, it was just an idea back in March, and we're still going at it. Like we're just getting uh, such great feedback from like uh, you know everywhere from our local enterprise office to Enterprise Ireland to the Web Summit. Uh, talking to you now, like it just everyone everyone understands the idea, and like everyone has. Um, you know, everyone has a responsibility to, to become more sustainable and, uh, 
we hope people won't have an excuse anymore once they hear about us. So I'm curious. I'm curious. What's your approach to the business? Is be more sustainable, or maybe out or one item you can make more money? Yeah, it's increase your digital offering. Basically, um, a lot of the businesses around that we've been working on and stuff like that either have don't have a digital offering or the digital offering they have is in, ter in terms of their websites and stuff are rubbish um so we're basically giving them an opportunity to, to improve uh their business and make more money by having a, a wider digital offer i mean i do believe when it comes to a platform where you can rent a awareness trust is very very dry it's very extremely important so the, who is going to collect and deliver and who is going to make sure that the item item is back and not is damaged yes yeah, so i suppose based on our market research uh, and on our competitors and stuff usually these transactions go ahead as planned um that that'll be all the user verification, I, I suppose, that, so that so that the owner will have a good profile, and then the borrower will have a good profile as well, and then we'll have the insurance in the background. Uh, we have a really good insurance partner who's very keen to work with us, so they'll be coming in in the background as well. So, in terms of trust, uh, that on top of our brand, but we will hopefully be providing delivery options. We can look at that as part of our business model. And I suppose in terms of the businesses, there's lots of different ways we can go to incorporate businesses into our business model, if you understand. So uh, as I say, we spoke to a lot of small shops around the Midlands of Ireland, and a lot of them would be happy to come on board and put us come up onto our website and hopefully we get them more customers. But also we can look at larger chain stores which we've seen some of our competitors do. For example, a large furniture store who, who could rent out furniture to students in, in, in a city. And, and this there's there's evidence and market research to suggest that this this helps, this this can happen and that we could work in the background making that happen through logistics and whatever else. But uh, we're very open-minded to the business side of it as well. But at the, at the beginning, we're just we're, we're more focused on C to C. It seems at the minute we see that there's huge potential in the C to C market. Um, we're we're just so we're so lucky to be working with Enterprise Ireland on the New Frontiers program. We're being led very very well by lots of top industry professionals and entrepreneurial professionals in Ireland here. So we're getting the best advice possible. We're developing up our finance, our financial plan, our market research. And we kind of have, we have a plan now. Uh, in the last month or two, our plan has come together, I think very well since the new year. We, we, uh, we definitely have launched in sight, <laughs> which is which is which is a good advance in our business in, in, over the past month or two, even uh, because we're just we're constantly meeting deadlines. We're constantly working to meet deadlines, um, reviews for new frontiers. We just we want to try. We attack every day as well as we can, and attack every challenge as well as we can, and perseverance. I suppose at the end of the day, we're not we're not going to stop. We, we see that there's. We think that there's an opportunity here and, and we have a chance of hopefully making making the world a little bit better so we're, we're, we're working hard what about all these businesses that have actually no as michael said before they are not digital at all sometimes they don't even have a website uh what do you do do you integrate them in your platform you create for them a visual window to the digital world well, the idea would be that they'll have their own, uh, you know, uh, their own profile and everything on it as operating as a business from which they'll be able to upload their items and everything like that. And from that point, they'd be, oper you know, they'd be renting out items similar to how, uh, you know, a, a normal consumer would do it. Uh, they would just be doing it uh, under the name of their, their own business. And obviously they would have more things to list uh, with their profile. Exactly, Michael. And, I, and just to speak to that, some of the businesses we spoke to were spending a lot of money developing websites and then the website didn't turn out not to be right or spending a lot of money on uh, taking payments online. We feel we can 
make this sort of streamline this for business at a low at a low cost and cut out unnecessary. They, these these business people don't want to really they don't understand websites and stuff. And if if someone comes as has happened, someone has come and offered to build a website and it hasn't been fit for purpose and have spent a few grand on it. So we hope we can provide businesses peace of mind to come through our trusted platform. Well, I was just going to say from from my own experience of um, like uh, anecdotally from like our family business and, that, and from other businesses that we have spoken to and that even when a website is developed for these uh, for these businesses and such, the aftercare and stuff just isn't there. So they they pay, you know, a few thousand to get this website made. But then if they want any kind of change or any kind of update um, or if it crashes or anything like that, they're often left high and dry for, for a number of days or because of the type of contract that they signed or stuff, the person who built the site is under no obligation to, you know, give them further support after the fact. This, um, this service will allow them to have their listings on it, but they are not in, they are not the ones who, the onus is not on them to run the website themselves. All they need to worry about is their profile and their listing and keeping the site up, keeping it looking like, you know, keeping it looking well and well branded and everything is our job um, as the people actually running this platform. I mean, Mark was talking about transactions. How does it work? Who handles the transaction? Are you, are you between also managing the cash flow? Uh, yeah, we're in the process of basically uh, setting up uh, with a with a payment uh, processing partner. Um, I think Mark can speak to that a little bit more. Or sorry, Robert can speak to that more, sorry. Yeah. Uh, well, the payment to be going through our system. Yeah, we have a payment provider who's who'll be on our platform. So the, the, the sale will go through and the commission will be charged all through hours and the payment will go from the renter to the owner, hopefully through hours. And, and we feel that people will choose to use our service because of the add-on insurance, the benefit of the insurance, which gives great peace of mind and is one of the top reasons why people wouldn't use the service. So it's a good advantage for us and the user verification. So yeah, the, the payment, uh, it happens through us. I mean, uh, you say between five and 15% on both sides or the five, 15% is the overall transaction? Um, yeah, well, well, just going off competitors, it should be perhaps it, it, it you, you you might perhaps take a bit on both sides. That seems to be what happens. Like the Airbnb model, they take I think five to fifteen percent from the owner and five to fifteen percent from the renter as well. Now Airbnb, they have slightly different charges, I believe. But that we we've done a basically a price analysis of all our competitors across the world that we can find. Um, and most of them is commission based. There's few that have like subscription based models, but most of them are commission based. And our our pricing we feel is uh, once once we have it finalised through the industry experts in in Enterprise Ireland, we feel our pricing is fair and it's sort of it's hopefully. Yeah. I suppose for for this the C to C the customer to customer, um, they're going to have to pay through us because like that's when their item is insured once when the pay as the payment is processed that's where the insurance kind of kicks in so like if it doesn't come through us there's no way like that's that's kind of the incentive as well for people to use the platform because it gives them peace of mind and like it'll stop people just contacting each other directly because they won't be able to avail of the insurance we provide and um, they won't be able to rate and review each other and if there's a problem, we won't be able to help them, you know. So there's a huge incentive for you know the consumer to consumer to uh, kind of do their transaction completely through us. Everything from listing the item, booking, and uh, the payment. The insurance is paid by inside the commission. You are going to pay the insurance for that. Yeah, it's it's going to be. We're still working it out with the insurance partner. Um, we don't have the you know the exact uh, details, but it's it's gonna it's gonna happen when the transaction occurs. Uh, we were thinking of offering an add-on insurance type of thing, whereas people could just do the transaction and if they feel safe, not availing of the insurance, uh, they could do that. But we just think it's 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 just better for everyone if the insurance is included in the payment. So um, yeah. that's kind of where we're at the moment, anyway. So uh, does that make sense? Absolutely. 
let's talk a bit more about um, the scaling process. You started in Ireland, and this is where you are at the quarter where you live. Uh, what's going to be next uh, for this round, and how you are going to scale your business more globally? Yeah, so um, we're starting in the Midlands of Ireland. It's it's not very uh, populated, but we're going to move into the big cities: Dublin, Cork, Galway, and um, possibly Belfast in Northern Ireland. Um, we were doing a startup. Uh, kind of accelerator course in Copenhagen. Uh, we believe Northern Europe uh, is very sustainable. They're very, uh, you know, they're very cons uh, kind of conscious about the global issues of climate change. Um, we also have um, another kind of course, accelerator course that are very interested in us in Germany. So uh, we're just getting great feedback all the time. Like there's people out there who believe in our idea We've also uh, entered a pitch competition uh, for a business school in Argentina and South America. And like we won it, like and we were up against 10 or 11 great businesses. Some of them had won, you know, 50K in pitch competitions and we were, we actually won and we were, we were shocked. But it just shows like in the developing world, they're actually even more uh, conscious about the environment. They're more conscious about saving money and maybe making a bit of extra money. So there's huge potential in like the developing world and um, there's way more potential outside of Ireland. But we think Ireland is a great place to start. Uh, the tech industry in Ireland is known throughout Europe like so. Um, it's a great place to start, val validate our idea, uh, get a bit of traction going. And like there's probably, I don't think there's any uh, better government body than Enterprise Ireland. Like we spoke to so many people at the Web Summit and they couldn't believe the, the support they're giving us. So um, it really is great, like, and it's uh, very exciting. And we're just uh, happy to work at this every day and uh, make it a reality. What's the vision, guys? One by one, Robert, Mark, and Michael, you're an entrepreneur. The, the only thing which I really, really believe an entrepreneur should be extremely proud is the vision. And that you need to be so good enough to execute your vision and make it working and be a huge company. That has to be huge, but face back what all the job you're doing. Now, uh, what's your vision? Where do you see your company? Uh, what exactly do you want to achieve one day? You, do you want to be recognized as impact company who is actually changing really something for the good? How do you see your company? Uh, yeah, just when you said impact company, I, I see this, I see Lend RB as being ultimately even even bigger than just lending and renting. Uh, Robert is, is, has great ideas the whole time, just in the whole sustainability sphere. I'd love us as a company to really start taking on the sort of sustainability challenges and after the renting that we can look into other areas. So that'd be my ultimate vision for the company. Um, I think we just, there's a lot of potential. We start off now. Um, we obviously, I'd love, I want to be successful. Uh, I want the company to be successful. We, I want to expand across Europe. I, I want to expand into the US uh, and other countries if possible. And I'd like to uh, personally just have, have, have different sort of business models other than just lending eventually. So we can explore different avenues of, uh, just different avenues of sustainability. What do you think, Robbie? Yeah, so like lend or be like we feel that is kind of like uh, it's an idea, it's it's a vision, and um, the idea of sharing. You know, people are very possessive, and um, I suppose someone told us people are magpies. But like, if people can see that you know they're willing to share, you know, their beloved items, and they feel safe doing it, like it'll show that the huge challenges facing society are. You know it's it's a group it's a it's a problem for society but like if we all come together we can actually solve these problems and like if we can succeed at this you know the, the world is really our oyster there's so many different areas we can branch into and uh, this is just a starting point but uh, it's a very important starting point and you know like uh, just in terms of the lending i suppose specifically um, it'd be great if I could use the platform here, 
then maybe go uh, to Poland or something and go on holidays and, you know, see where, where can I rent like uh, skis or where can I, you know, if I need anything like, and then people can travel lighter. Like it just makes so much sense. Like it'd be great if it was a universal, that's why we said at the start, a universally sustainable fire and services marketplace. So we want to be universal. We want, we just think it's easier for people to have one platform and, and one thing to use to, everywhere instead of like constantly setting up a new profile or constantly up, you know, keep on typing your details into a, a new account. Like, you know, it's one thing that like, it's a one model fits all approach. So um, that'd be my vision. So I think, I think Mark and Robbie have kind of touched on the major, major points of it, but I'll keep my, so I'll keep my one short. Um, my vision is a kind of a responsibly ran company making, you know, making a responsible product that allows consumers to behave and to consume responsibly um, and proving that, you know, indivi in, in, being individualistic um, and focused only on the self and what I'm getting and that in the long run is not, will not be beneficial for an individual, but it also won't be beneficial for a community um, and it won't be, it won't be beneficial for that individual's uh, pocket when alternatives like our uh, company um, are providing, uh, you know, community paced uh, sharing services um, that allows people to um, make money back on their own items. So that's the, the vision. Responsible company, responsible product, and responsible people. Thank you. How much are you raising? As much, as much as we can, but um, we, have a, we have a few options at the minute. Obviously, we're working with Enterprise Ireland, so as you can expect, uh, they, have a, they have a plan for us once we keep hitting their targets. So they have, it's 50K up to maybe 250K, so that's a typical seed round. We can be looking at those sort of figures through Enterprise Ireland at some stage. Um, we're still just treading the waters uh, in terms of investment we're learning as much as we can um it's hard for us to say how much we're looking to raise what do you think robbie yeah i suppose we haven't gone through our pre-seed round yet but um that's going to happen soon and it's going to happen quite fast um i suppose the benefit of of raising through an established body like enterprise ireland um you know means you have access to, to their supports but um, like there is going to be costs involved. Obviously, we have to be realistic as well. Like we're gonna we're gonna need money for a huge marketing campaign, and um, we're gonna need to outsource a lot of work. Um, like this week, myself and Mark, uh, we're doing up financials. Uh, Mark was working on it mainly, and uh, like we've gotten quotes from all the third parties we might need services off. So. Um, you know, it's it's all still in the pipeline, but um, I, I don't wanna uh, be tying ourselves down to any any figures on this. So um, yeah, it's all we're, we're very flexible. We're open to negotiating. Like you know, as long as someone believes in us and our our, and our idea, like we're always the door is all, always open. So that's let's put this on pride talks. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, ultimately, we would be looking to raise Series A, Series B, and perhaps go public. You know down the line so ultimately that would definitely be part of of our plans so that has to start somewhere i think uh the, the fundraising route is well trodden at this stage it's it's easy to see what people are getting and how much equity has been taken so we know where we stand and we think we have a good product and stuff and we'll just we'll work with our friends in enterprise ireland and we're happy to work with friends across the world who who, who believe in us as well obviously so, Robert, Mark, Michael, thank you very much for coming to this talk. It's been a very graduate for him. I mean, you and all the best for your startup. Take care. Thanks very Thanks much, so much, Max. Thank you. Bye Thanks. bye.